Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to uh, start today with a little bit of a story. Hope I'm coming coming in clear enough. Um, when I was about 22 or 23 years old, I had my car broken into, and I had this big black cop come out and, uh, you know, take a, um, oh, you know, um, I guess, you know, um, take my statement, I guess, on whatever happened, you know, what was stolen, you know, or what, what do I, what do I know? And, um, uh, he was looking at my license and he kept looking at me. He looked back at my license, at me and my license back and forth. He looked at my last name and he said, that's not Mexican. And I said, well, well, cause I'm not Mexican. And he's like, well, what are you then? And I was like, my last name's Russian, you know, and... I told myself I've got Chinese blood, I've got Russian blood, I've got Native American Indian blood, you know, I have uh, Hispanic blood, you know, I have, um, and you know, a bunch of like an ensemble of like white races, you know, or whatever, you know, Irish to, you know, my my, my grandmother who raised me, you know, she was uh, she was you know red haired and and freckled all over and. Um, you know, that, that, that cop looked at me and he said, uh, uh, boy, 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 he said, you just, you're just living proof of Martin Luther King's dream, aren't you? You know, and I, I just laughed and, you know, and it always stuck, stuck out to me, you know, and, and I don't know how many of you are this way, you know, I, I don't know what my, what my, what, like, what color my followers are, which, you know, I don't know, and I mean, truth be told, I don't care. But that's the backbone to my story, is how I don't care. And I'm not saying everybody feels this way. I'm, I'm not trying to get anyone to divulge their secrets or anything, or uh, I don't need proof, you know, oh, well, you know, I've never been raised, so I don't see, I, don't, I just don't see color. I, I really don't need that from anyone. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, you know, I just, I'm talking about me personally. And the only reason why I even bring any of this up, because a lot of you know about, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, stuff that's in social media right now. And maybe you do, maybe you don't know. But a lot of this in social media right now, you know, like a bunch of the, uh, uh, not white guilt, but, um, you know, every white person is racist, you know, and white privilege, you know, and... Uh, you know, Black Lives Matter, which, you know, I, I'll get to everything, but the point that I'm getting to is me personally and others that I know that are like me that are clearly, I say clearly, but people don't see clearly, so maybe that's the problem, but I feel that it's clear that I don't sound like, you know, a Mexican. I don't have like a Mexican twang. You know, I don't have like this you know what I'm talking about. Does that make you racist because you know? No. You know, I mean, I, I, everything will come full circle. But, you know, I don't have a Mexican twang. I've been told before, am I Hawaiian, you know, or do I have some kind of like Pacific Islander or something like that in me, you know? Uh, am I Indian? Which, you know, I'm going to grow my hair. I've had hair to my shoulders or beyond my shoulders numerous times, and I'm probably going back to that. And... um you know, I've, I've asked if I've been Native American Indian, which I do have some. You know, I have some of all these things that people are saying. People said I had Chinese eyes. You know, maybe not so much now, but, you know, I, I heard it growing up. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm someone that suffers from an identity crisis, which most people that don't have really a race to all their own usually suffer from that. And people, a lot of them that do suffer from identity crisis are in denial and they don't think that they do, you know, which they do. And, and it's not trying to belittle someone saying, when you hear the word crisis, you just think of like, help me, help me. But that's not really the case. It's, you don't ever really have a culture to call your own. And it makes you a certain type of person. And I think that if any of you have put together somewhat of who I am, you'll know that I kind of see things differently. I don't come off biased. At least I hope I don't. But um, that's just a little bit what I wanted to talk about, you know, is, and, I, you know, and, I, and 
y'all you, you know my channel isn't very big, and if it were ever to be big, this would probably be a video a lot of people would be talking shit about because I'm going to offend everyone, and at the same time, hopefully you can see my neutrality behind it. The man that raised me the most, and I say by raised, I mean rode bikes with me, played basketball, you know, took me to like Wet n Wild, which there are any, there aren't any more. Um, you know, the man that did the most with me and actually tried to show me things, you know, was my was my stepfather, my 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 mother's husband, and he was a black guy, and uh, he was at the very beginning of the computer wave. You know, I guess you know he was. Uh, one of those black guys you say that aren't black, you know, they sound white or whatever, but, you know, he was just educated, you know, he was an educated black guy, he, he showed me a lot of uh, uh, music I never would have seen, you know, like Parliament and P-Funk, uh, you know, George Clinton, uh, you know, Bootsy Collins, a lot of funky music from like the 60s and 70s, you know, that you, I, I would never would have ever, you know, found, and he showed me everything that he loved, and, you know, and I adopted a lot of it. I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but I was a professional professional musician. Maybe one of these days I'll show you the videos on YouTube where I've been on TV, I've been on the radio. Um, I've uh, made albums with uh, probably 80 different musicians. And just a little side note about the whole musician thing. What paid the bills wasn't music I wanted to play. What paid the bills was country singers, folk singers, uh, uh, don't get me wrong, I dug the classic rock, you know, stuff like that, you know, but I, it was just really hard for me to find these people, and the kind of music I wanted to play wasn't very many places to find. They're very eccentric bands and eccentric music, because that's the kind of music that I listen to at times, and that's the kind of music I wanted to play, you know. Um, so anyway, um, back to my point, you know, I just wanted to state that being who I am, and I'm not going to say every person is this way. Let me repeat myself. I am not saying that every person is this way, but a lot of people are. People take their black heritage seriously. People think take their white heritage seriously. And people, and God forbid, Latin people, Hispanics and Brazilians, they take their 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 history very serious. And it's, you know, it's family pride, you know, it's a cultural pride, whatever you want to call it. You know, we all have different flags and countries we come from. That's what makes America, America. But, you know, I hear and I see a lot of things that where I've been, I guess, lucky. When I was a young man, we used to have to go buy pot, buy weed, whatever. Um, I lived in a country town my high school years, and it was around nothing but white people. And of course, whatever few Hispanics there were, I was friends with them. Whatever few blacks there were, I was friends with them. And when it's the you know 95% white, of course you're going to have you know white friends too. I didn't say their parents liked me. I didn't say that. But as far as the kids went, I didn't have very many problems. I, I was a you know a pretty cool guy in school, and you know I, mean, I think I was fairly liked. You know, I never got bullied. You know, so uh, but that's you know that's a quite that's that's a story for another day. But I was a let into uh, you know I'm sorry. So being from that kind of area where the majority of people were white, a lot of my friends that smoked pot were white people and of course they were like skater kids if you're my age you know what I'm talking about you know it was the skaters that had big giant pants and uh, you know um, you know I don't know it was in the days of you know Kurt Cobain and airwalk shoes and um, I guess Jenko pants and stuff like that it was in that era so when I hung out with these, you know, shaggy looking guys, you know, and I mean shaggy like, you know, Scooby Doo, when I hung out with some of these guys, you know, they're they're all white guys. But we would have to leave the area we were from, which Dallas was maybe a 35 minute drive, 45 minutes. And we would have to go all the way into Dallas. And granted it was uh, South Dallas and South Dallas is pretty rough and pretty 
black or Mexican or Hispanic, whatever you want to call it. But where we would go to go get pot, it was like a little service station where they had like these just random ass black dudes walking around. You pull up, you roll down your window, they're asking, you know, what you know, what do you want? What are you looking for? It could have been crack, it could have been pot, it could be anything that you were maybe not like heroin and like um one of those called like glam glamorous drugs, you know. I don't know if you get cocaine, and if you could, I don't know if I'd get it from there. But anyway, there was a thousand stories of how my white friends would go and they would get their shit took. They would pull out the money, black dude would reach in there, steal their shit, and take off running. I mean, well, what are you going to do? You know, there might be two or three of you in a car, but there's fucking 50 of these motherfuckers at the gas station. So what the fuck are you going to do? You're going to fucking roll up your damn windows before you get out and get your fucking ass beat to death, fucking shot or fucking stabbed, or, and, your, and get your fucking car stolen. So, and don't get me wrong, it's not like I'm trying to pick on black people, but what I'm trying to say is that social media has a way of spinning things in a way that I mean, maybe it's these artsy-fartsy inner city areas where there's coffee shops everywhere people have to be like this this like PC way you know this politically correct way where everybody is all the same kind of stuff but that's just not the way the world is you know I've, I've had these talks with people and of course when I have them they're like on Facebook and crap and it was a long time ago but you know it's like you can only say so much before you become like some offensive person somehow and all these people know that I related, pro at least people that I grew up with, they knew that I related probably with the black culture the most because when I was a kid, I was pretty crazy and I did a lot of things I shouldn't have. I got into a lot of fights. I did a lot of uh, things that got me in trouble. And, uh, you know, the only other people that were as crazy as I was was, you know, I hate to say it, but uh, black people. You know, they were the only ones that were didn't give a fuck as much as I didn't give a fuck. So guess what? You know, we got along, you know. And, and plus, to be honest, you know, I listened to, like, rap and stuff all the time. That was, like, my culture. My pants was hanging off my ass. And, you know, again, you know, identity issues, you know. And um, the point, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make, I guess, is being who I am to where I really had no, I had no culture that was mine. When I was around black people, I was that Mexican dude. When I'm around white people, I'm that Mexican dude. But here's the funny part. The people that have been the meanest to me my whole life. The last instance I had maybe this type of run-in with people maybe about two or three years ago. But Mexicans and Hispanics can't stand me. But to everyone else, that's kind of who I look like. I look like I'm a Hispanic guy. Until I speak, of course, because when I speak, you know, oh shit, you know, this guy sounds like, you know, a news channel guy or a radio guy. But that's what I would, you know, Mexicans and Hispanics have been the meanest to me. And it's, it's some of my family, too. Not that they've necessarily been mean to me, but I mean, you know, you know, I, I've eaten, you know, Mexican food and had Mexican birthday parties and been to families houses that are nothing but Mexicans you know and also a little side note I don't know if any of you know the singer Selena but she's like a third cousin of mine we're related really far down the chain her her dad is my uh, uh, what is it her dad is my grandmother's brother or something like that on the Mexican side but uh but yeah you know I've heard all this crap that people say about the other one. What blacks say when I'm my best friend growing up was a was a black guy. Um, you know, you hear all these things that people say about the other ones. When you're in a white house, they talk about blacks. When you're in a black house, they talk about whites. When you're around Mexicans, they talk about both. You know, I mean. You know, it's just, there's just this really weird thing I just see going on online, you know, and it's like, the job that I had for like 15 years, the half of it, 
I'd say half of it was working in cities that were predominantly black. And there was black money there, too. There's people that had Lexuses and Mercedes and, you know, never got their hands dirty one time. It's like, hey, how you doing, sir? You know, what's going on, buddy? You know, and they were as black as any black person gets, but they were educated, went to school, went to college, had nice cars, nice house. You know, there was both there. But if you think that there wasn't times where they looked at me like I didn't belong when I walked into solid black stores, solid black areas, it still happens. But I definitely wasn't looked at like I was a white guy. That didn't happen. However, I do know what they would say when a white person shows up or when a white person's around because they didn't care if I heard because I'm not white, so they don't give a shit. It happens both ways. You get around white people, they never really cared about me, especially when they heard me speak. They're like, oh, it's okay. He's not Mexican. He just, he's just brown. So they wouldn't, they never really cared. You know, they talked to me about all their crazy shit, you know, or whatever, you know, but they talk about blacks like, you know, like you're not supposed to, I guess. But I guess the point that I'm trying to make is I don't know, I'm, I'm really, either it's the face that people just put on because they're being judged, they're being scrutinized and watched, and they're really somebody else behind closed doors, and maybe with enough of this shit, maybe people really will change, but I just know that it's not so filled with white people that just need, that are all racist, that just need to change, it's not like that, I mean, blacks are just as fucking racist as fucking white people can be. And I guess the point that I was trying to make about me having no identity, no culture that was mine. Granted, as I walk with these people, all the colors, it's not like I never talked to Mexicans or Hispanics, because I, I, I did. And definitely there's a few of them that are like me that are brownish, you know, maybe mixed. You know, daddy's white, mama's white. Um, don't speak a lick of Spanish, sound just like me. And, of course, these were a lot of people that, you know, we gravitated to each other because in that we were similar. But you hear all this stuff, you know, that the other people think about the other one. And they don't say, they don't care that you're there because you're not the other one. You know, you're, you're like them in a sense. When you're like, when you're, when you're, when you speak like I do, you're white enough. When you're not white to blacks, you're brown enough you know and Latin people take their Latin pride very seriously you know so I don't know I guess the thing that I'm really getting at is things aren't always the way they seem and it's not like it's not like people are perfect or anywhere near it maybe it's because millennials like run the internet you know or people are just so afraid of being judged but it's not perfect, and it's definitely not some every white person is racist that I see here going on, and blacks are just getting shot for being black, you know, or there are still black environments, there are still black areas where people have every right to excel and be whoever they want to be. If they, uh, I don't know, would go to school, stop acting like, you know, loud-ass crazy people, and don't get me wrong, there's fucking rednecks that run around with their fucking dualies and their fucking F-350s with steel balls hanging from the back of their bumper with their rebel flag flying in the back of their truck. Believe me, there are very much idiots of all shapes and sizes. But just because I have something against certain cultures doesn't make me racist. I might be culturally biased because no matter how they come, if I got some hooping and hollering, grabbing my dick kind of motherfucker up in my face, I don't like that. You know, if I got some fucking piece of shit fucking hillbilly with his fucking belly hanging out and fucking his damn beers all up in his fucking truck, revving his fucking diesel fucking engine with fucking smoke in my face, shit pisses me off too. And with Mexicans, like I said, they've been the meanest to me. I got 10,000 stories that go along with like Mexicans and Hispanics. So I can go on and on and on and on about that. I'm just not gonna. 
So anyway, I guess the point of this video was I just wanted to get something off my chest that I just feel like when you don't have an identity the way that I do, you hear all the bad shit and you blend in with them the same way. But there isn't this weird thing that's going on online where there's, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know how, how to really put my finger on it, but there's just all this finger pointing and people need to fix what's wrong with their own cultures, with their own, with their own people before they start trying to fix everybody else. And if you try to say anything, oh, well, you were just in the wrong neighborhood. Oh, you were just around the wrong people. Oh, well, there's always bad ones of every kind. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. But don't sit here and try to pretend like it's not that way. And that's why I try to say, I'm not racist. I'm just culturally biased. I don't I don't like every culture. Because of what you know, some of these people's culture is to be a certain way. All right, that's fine. But it's not every one of them. And I mean that for both sides. I mean that... Because to be honest, none of them, not even Mexicans, Hispanics, whites, blacks, and don't even get me started like on Chinese people and like, you know, Middle Eastern Indians. I'm never ever going to be one of them. If I go to a party that's solid of any color, any color, all blacks, I'm still that Mexican dude. I go to a color a party with nothing but whites. I'm still that Mexican dude. I go to a party with Mexicans, I'm probably not leaving there unless I'm in a fucking ambulance. So I'm just saying, things aren't always what they seem. And and maybe, you know, some of these words will echo in some of your lives. You don't necessarily have to say, I don't like black folks. And that's you, you can't even say that honestly, even if you think you don't like black people. You can't even say that honestly, because not every black acts the same. Same thing with white people. If you're not white, you know, I mean, you can't say that every single one of them's the same way because they're not. You know, I mean, so, I mean, I think it's really, really hard to be racist, honestly. Culturally biased, good chance, but not racist. So, anyway, that's it. I'm going to thank everybody. If any of you have listened this long, listen to what I've had to say. I appreciate it. Um, if you made it this far, also... Um, I have my follow-up video to ask me questions that I want to hear from you guys. If there's anything you can think of, I'll be making it in about two days. And it's probably going to be a long video because I'm going to address everyone. I'm going to address their questions. And I'm going to answer you guys back. So um, thanks again, and I will talk to you guys really soon. And like always, on, in untethered eyes... I want to make sure that all of you, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, you know, stay vigilant, have your eyes open, always give things the fair amount of thought that it needs and deserves, and stay strong.